Joining us is Mindy Brandish Orda, who is the Community Affairs Manager for Consumers Energy. Mindy, I'm so excited to talk to you because you have such amazing news, a new program that's being established in Jackson. What is it all about? Well, thank you so much for having me. We at Consumers Energy learned about this program that started in Brattleboro, Vermont, and thought this program can be done and replicated anywhere, and especially in Jackson. So what it is, it is an economic development program that helps businesses stay open, helps people keep their jobs, and feeds the hungry. How does it do all that? What's it called? <laughs> yeah, the name would be important. It's called Our Town. Uh, our town meal distribution program. So we went to restaurants and we said, what would be a fair price for a healthy meal that you source locally? And they said, $10 could get you a nice healthy meal, could cover our costs, could keep our people employed. And they commit to spending at least 50% of the products locally sourced. So we get to keep the businesses open and keep people in those jobs. Their vendors and their suppliers also get to stay open and keep those jobs. And we end up with all of these healthy, delicious local meals that we give away for free to the people in need. So walk me through it. How, how does it work? So first we went to all the restaurants in Jackson County and said, are you interested in participating? Then we had to narrow it down. We've, we have 21 restaurants participating at this point and we've raised enough money. Consumers Energy put in a significant amount, but let me tell you the Jackson community more than matched our amount. So we were able to raise almost $500,000 oh to pay restaurants to make healthy meals, again, source locally, and uh, so we're gonna run it for 10 weeks. It starts February 1st. We'll be giving meals away on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from four to 6 p.m. PM at the King Center in Jackson. First come, first serve, there'll be a drive-through lane as well as a walk-up lane because we really want to be conscious of those we're trying to serve with these meals. Not everyone has a vehicle, so we have a walk-up lane. We made sure that the meals, while they will be delivered cold, they're meant to be reheated, but we made sure that there are some cold options in case people can't reheat. And also that the reheating can be done in a microwave. You don't have to have an oven, you don't have to have fancy, you know, cutlery or anything. It's, it's very simple and yet healthy and delicious and local food. So, so people can come get the meals, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for 10 weeks starting February first. And if we have leftover meals, we've partnered with the Interface Shelter to get them meals. We're actually giving them meals pre as well. So they're guaranteed to have meals for their uh, people in the shelter for those three days. And if we happen to have extra meals, we're going to make sure we get those to the people in need. We've got a couple distribution little points we're working on. And, you know, really, some people would say that for $10, you could and provide many, many meals, not just one meal. And, and that is absolutely true. That is one component of this program, feeding the hungry, um, dealing with the food scarcity that we're all experiencing in our communities. The bigger other components of this program are, like I said, economic development, keeping these small businesses open, the restaurants and their suppliers, and then keeping the people in the jobs. And also while the people making the food may not be everyone that works in a restaurant, yeah. the ability for the restaurant to stay open and to open back up when the restrictions are lifted after COVID guarantees that those jobs will be there for everybody else to come back to. It's an incredible win-win for really everyone. And, and then I think of the diversity in the meals. If you have 21 restaurants mm -hmm. and it's just an incredible, an incredible thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we made sure that when we selected the restaurants, we had a diversity of restaurants. We have diversity of geography, of ethnicity, of food, of race and ethnicity and sex of owners. We really tried to spread it out as much as possible so that there could be a deep impact into all of the pockets of the community. So I'm hoping that other communities jump on the bandwagon and say, hey, uh, we might be interested in something like this. Have you seen that yet? Well, it hasn't started yet, but are you expecting that? We're hoping, we really hope that this is a pilot for Michigan. 
that we do this in Jackson and then other communities across the state, other corporations across the United States say, we can do this in our community. We can raise these dollars. We can support these local businesses. And they launch a similar program in their own community. We're seeing offshoots of a pro program like this, you know, little pieces of it in there are happening and that's great. Uh, as I said earlier, we really stole Vermont, Brattleboro, Vermont's model. We didn't want to recreate the wheel. They've been doing this for months. We knew that they had figured out what to do and what not to do. So we learned from them and then we adopted it to our community. And I just hope that other people are inspired not only to contribute to their local owned businesses, but also to, to think bigger and, and dream of an impact that they could have with a program like this. How did you hear about the program from Vermont? Like, how, how did that happen? It was actually on an NBC show. So uh, a newscast we saw. Wow, it's, it's incredible. How can people get in, involved in this? Great question, thank you. So obviously we are still seeking dollars. The more money we raise, the longer we can run the program. Uh, the number of meals that we're doing is based on our population demographics. So we looked at, again, Vermont and how they figured out how many meals are needed. We looked at our population, we looked at the poverty levels and we made a guess. So our it's 4,000 meals a week, 1,250, three different times each week for a total at this point of 40,000 meals over 10 weeks. Uh, if we can raise more money, we'll continue it and we'll do more meals. We need volunteers. We need people to help distribute the meals. We're working very closely with the city of Jackson. Uh, they're running a lot of our logistics and operations on this. So there'll be safety protocols, not just for COVID, but also you know just general safety, foot traffic, car traffic. How do we handle that and make sure that everyone is safe? We need volunteers to help with that component. Uh, and then uh, we just need people to spread the word and, and tell those neighbors and those friends in need of food to come come get the meal. No questions asked. You come, you say you need a meal, you're given a meal. We, we don't need to know your, your financial status. We're gonna trust that you say the truth and we're gonna honor you with that. So people can go to thecityofjackson.org for all kinds of information on how to volunteer, how to contribute. The Jackson Community Foundation has a page set up where you can contribute with a credit card right there on their website. The Enterprise Group of Jackson is our fiduciary. So we're making sure that this is run not only uh, with great impact, but also with true in and um, you know invisibility. So we wanna be a, a transparent and above board on everything. So was it the, the employees of Consumers Energy or Consumers Energy that really started the process? Yeah, um, Jen Brady at Consumers Energy saw this newscast and said, we need to do that. And she rallied the troops. And let me tell you, her tenacity and the company's commitment to being a good corporate citizen, it was very easy for the company to say, we need to do this. Earlier in 2020, Consumers Energy gave $850,000 to local chambers in downtown areas for a gift card matching program, also part of the Our Town brand where we literally said, for example, in Jackson, if you buy a $50 gift certificate, we're gonna give you a $100 gift certificate. So we matched it one for one. You, walk, you came out with 50, walked out with 100, all to drive business to these downtown core shopping districts. So that program was already underway when we learned about this program and said, you know, this is a great extension of what we're already doing to help these local small businesses. So, you know, I've only been at Consumers Energy barely over a year and it has just been a wonderful experience to see the passion, the commitment, the culture, uh, the caring and agility that the employees exhibit there. So it was a very easy decision for consumers to do this and we were very lucky to have local partners from all of our corporate sponsors to uh, the local nonprofits that have joined us to, to pull it off. I love it. It's such a great concept. I'm going to put all the information on the screen so people can sign up and help out or make a donation or just learn more about it. And hopefully this will spread throughout other communities across Michigan and nationwide. <laughs> Thank you. So Mindy, I always end every interview by asking the same question. And that is, Mindy, tell me something you're grateful for. So much. Uh, gratitude happens to be my word of the year. But if I can tell you a real quick story, um, we decided, like many people who are home, to invest in our house. So, you know, paint, you know, new little components. And then our HVAC system went out. And then our 
septic tank went out. And then, you know, refrigerator, you name it, right? It was just that time of year and everything's piling on. And my husband and I started to get stressed about it. But I said, you know what? We need to be grateful that we have a home because there are so many people that don't have a safe place to live. And we need to be grateful that while we don't want to spend this money on these things, we can. And we need to be grateful that if we couldn't, we are surrounded by uh, a system of family and friends that would be there for us, that would help us out. We have resources that so many don't. And so I'm just grateful that I had to spend thousands of dollars on a new HVAC system. Well said. Mindy, thank you for what you do and thank you to Consumers Energy. Thank you.